wanted to make sure our goal was to inform parents and grandparents about what was going on in our, um, our Florida educational system and how it's just not going down the path that most parents um, would really approve of. Um, again, um, like she said, I am the mom of six children. We do have one on the way. Yes, we're that good old Catholic family, so yeah, go ahead and get that all out. <laughs> Everyone asked her, I was in BJ shopping, and I had five of them with me, and he goes, she goes, are these all yours? And I had a great comeback line, and I said, no, I'll hold my tongue, I won't say nothing, but yes, these are all mine. And, are you Catholic? And like, guilty, guilty, guilty. But anyway, so I do have six children. Um, my oldest is 14, and the, young, the other one is 12, 8, 7, 4, and then... <laughs> The youngest will be two in December, so then we do have the one on the way. I do have a 24-year-old stepdaughter. Um, my husband has a daughter from a previous marriage, and she even has a little girl. So technically, I'm a grandma, but I'm just young. Doesn't look to be called grandma, so we just kind of come up with a different scenario with that. But, See, my, my motto is, I don't mind being a grandmother. I just don't ever want to look like one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a great time. We have a great time. Um, so anyway, I am a graduate of Clay County. My husband and I have lived in Clay County. We've been married for 15 years now. Um, so God bless that man for putting up with me for all these years. He is a, <laughs> he's a wonderful man. Um, I'm gonna go back here. I go off the cuff and then kind of got to regroup myself. So just kind of bear with me here. Um, again, I grew up in Clay County. My, I had a wonderful background. Of, uh, my parents raised me right, I think, and I, I'll, I always warn people. Um, I was not raised with a filter on this mouth. I was not raised to be politically correct. I do not sugarcoat anything. So what you hear is what you get, and my ending line is that there, all the information is given, you go marinate in it, and they come back and we'll discuss everything. So I have a lot of information to give, but again, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, again, my research began about a year ago um, when I was on the student advisory committee at my children's school. At the time, three of them attended a Clay County Public School, and so I felt it was my duty as a mom to get involved and know what was going on, and that's when I started hearing of the terms of the Common Core State Standards, <coughs> rigorous standards, all of this, and I said, something's just not right, because I, when you think about the word rigor, truthfully, what's the word that, what's the word that comes to mind when you hear that word? Rigor, rigor mortis. <laughs> That's quite the form of it, but I was like, this is just not making sense. So I looked up, and I'm like, why is something that's so rigid, has a definition of being rigid and without giving, going to be so great for our kids when you know that all of our children have such different learning styles and each child learns differently? Come do that at my house, and there's a scientific experiment right there. So I said, this just doesn't, this is not sounding right. So I started kind of making some phone calls um, to my local school board members, and one of them pretty much blew me off and said, there's really nothing I could do that Common Core was here to stay. And I said, oh, no, no, no. Number one, you're not going to tell me, the mom of six children, that there's nothing I'm gonna, I can do to stop something that I didn't think was going to be very beneficial to my children in the education system. So that kind of just lit the fire underneath my butt, and here I am today. So here my purpose here tonight is I'm going to inform you of what the Common Core State Standards are. I'm sure we've all heard of it. By now, I'm, I'm hoping that most of us have heard what the Common Core State Standards are. How much history do you know behind these standards? Anybody? Not a lot, probably. And that was, yeah, I think that was intentional, to be honest with you. So if you can go ahead and forward it to the slide where it says the definition of what the Common Core State Standards are. That Keep going. Tell about. There we go. Common Core State Standards, they are a set of standards, a, na a uniform set of national curriculum standards in math and language arts with future iterations for science and social studies developed by Washington, D.C.-based organizations with zero accountability to the state, schools, or community. So there were three groups that organized all this. They're all non-governmental special interest groups. And their common agenda had done all the financing, writing, evaluation, and promotion of the standards. These non-governmental special interest groups are the ones with the biggest market share and in the position to profit the most from this new regulation. I think these standards have more to do with profit than what's best for our children. These special interest groups are the ones involved heavily with the consortas. So the writing of the Common Core State Standards were done in D.C. behind closed doors by Achieve, the National Governors Association, and the Chief Counsel and State for State School Officers. Achieve was pulled in due to their connection to schools and states so the standards could be pushed in easier. So if you don't mind, go ahead and um, go to the um, NGA and the CCS. The Common Core State Standards, they are a licensed and copyrighted agreement. Here it is. When you have a licensed and copyrighted agreement, can anyone change them? No. So if this was going to be so beneficial to our state, who have the right to change with it and, and do things as they needed for the students in their, in their community, 
They should have the right to do that. This does not allow the states to change anything. They can add to the standards up to 15%, but what was the, what is the classification of 15%, and are those students going to be tested on the 15% that gets added to the curriculum? <coughs> nope. So what makes you think that the states are going to add anything? The students are, the teachers aren't going to be adding anything if they're not going to be tested on it because it's a waste of their time. So here again, here's a license agreement. Florida signed on to it. Can't change it. So all these. People who are saying it was state-led and we can do what we want, you can't because they're a licensed agreement. Quick question, where was Clay County ranked in the state at the time your children were in it? To be honest with you, I do not know. Because it, it is one of the higher counties across the state. It is, along with St. John's state. County, it, was, yeah. it, it, it ranks up there, so right. yes. Yeah. Um, and you can go on to the NGA because I want to give people the NGA. The National Governors Association, D.C. Pace, 5013C organization funded by federal grants, state taxpayers, and private organizations. President at the time of benchmarking for uh, success, Janet Napolitano, they received $2.2 million from the Gates Foundation to promote the Common Core State Standards and to give and to promote to the governors. The Council of Chief State School Officers is another group that was um, has hold the license to the standards. Again, another uh, DC-based organization, and I think Gates gave them, I don't have the, the money on here, but Gates also gave them um, money as well to do that. They're also funded by business par partners such as Pearson Education, Microsoft, McGraw-Hill, Global Scholar, um, Data Recognition Corporation, Apple, Wireless Generation, Intel, and there's so many, many, many more. Um, Pearson Education right here. That's a major one that we need to be paying attention to because Pearson is a major curriculum company that is in our classrooms today. This information that you've shown on the screen, is this a written or something that we can have? Yep, I have a oh. bunch of pamphlets, that I have folders of information out. that I can, I'm handing all out to you and everything on there okay. is factual. Research. I've researched it and we've just kind of compiled everything to you. So just there's take one per here. couple, please. Yeah, and you can take it home. Okay, and you can go to the next slide too, um, Raymond, if you don't mind. <laughs> okay, the third person, the third organization here that's involved with the standards is Achieve. Achieve is a Washington D.C. group formed in 1996 by a group of corporate leaders and some governors who wanted standards-based education across the states. Here's their website. You can go to their website and check them out. Achieve openly admits that it developed the Common Core and that the organization's goal is to alter states' policies. That's on their website. Who has the right to alter states' policies? State legislators only. Right, and that the and people. they are there because of why? <laughs> Us, the voters. So why is the chief thinking it can go ahead and alter states' policies? So to me, that's a dangerous avenue that a chief is trying to go down in the first place. I'm the one who's the taxpayer, along with all of you in the room full of them. We are the ones that have the right to alter our state's policies through our legislatures that we elect by the voting process. So here again, Achieve not only wrote the Common Core State Standards that would be turned into curriculum and tests, but they also are writing the tests themselves. The tests will signal whether students are on track to graduate ready for college in the workplace as defined by the small DC group. Now I'm going to go over some of the biggest players within the Common Core State Standards. And David Raymond, you can go to the next one. Um, the first one is going to be Bill Gates. I'm sure we've all heard of Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> his astronomical wealth has persuaded millions that Common Core is the solution to America's education problems. Um, he has bribed the National PTA to advocate for Common Core state standards um, to the parents. He has paid $25 million to the NGA and the CCSSO to promote the standards. He's also given money to schools like Harvard, Standard, and Brown University for his vision of research and setting what he claims are college and career readiness standards. With his large amounts of money, he's circumvented the American people and any vetting by legislative, educator, or parent groups. For a man who dropped out of college, how would he know what students need to be need to have to be college and career ready? But another terminology that I keep having a, that I'll keep repeating to you is college and career ready. Where's the university level students? Where do they fall into place in here? No one's really addressed that. You're going to have those students that are going to be better and want to succeed better than a regular state college. They want to go to the university level, and they should be allowed to have it. So why are we only focused on college and career ready? Question? Yeah. Um, 
question to ask yourself. Again, we'll go ahead and continue on. The next player is David Coleman. Now, oh, David Coleman, I terrible. think you should be very, very leery of this gentleman right here, David Evil. Coleman. He was one of the primary writers of the English language art standards. He was the one who is in charge of the college boards right now. He <clears> is the, one of the ones that slashed 70% of the classic literature from the high school standards. So instead of getting a classic literature-based education in high school and even in the younger grade, they will be getting informational text. His informational texts that he feels are important are things such as Federal Reserve documents, Supreme Court justice rulings, air conditioning, insulation, installation. That's what he feels is going to make a student college and career <coughs> ready. So just to kind of give you that um, brief thing. He's also in the process of rewriting the SAT. Now this is where homeschooling kind of comes into play because when you have a gentleman who has that kind of power to re revise and rewrite the SAT, that gets a little scary because the type of questions that